بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أكيدك لا تنادي فهمه يا بني قوم This celebration is a mass wedding organized by Hamas. With more than 450 happy couples to be, the Islamic movement's event has become a popular attraction among the people. Each couple is given a cash payment of approximately 500 US dollars, which goes a long way in Gaza. While the event was paid for, organized and attended by some of Hamas's top political leaders, the couples were not just Hamas members, but from various factions. The only flags waving on stage were Palestinian and not party ones. Oh then, the Islamophobes allege the prepubescent girls in this picture were being married off to the men and subsequently move seamlessly onto their sinister agenda of painting Muslim men as pedophiles and rapists. The reality is the girls in the picture were not the brides but were family members of the brides slash grooms who were getting married. The girls pictured were not getting married. It was simply a bunch of pictures and video footage from a Palestinian Hamas mass marriage celebration. This fact is confirmed by a Sky News reporter, Tim Marshall, who was present at the marriage celebration. Tim Marshall was indeed livid at the sinister nature of the hoax as a result he came out to expose the hoax. Tim Marshall went to the extent of leaving comments on the sites which ran with the hoax pedophile marriage, claims Do dozens, and I mean dozens, of websites took the video of the event and wrote lurid stories about a mass mass pedophilia with headlines about 450 child brides and endless copy about how disgusting this was. I spent a few hours visiting websites and leaving comments where I could. Too little avail. Instead I received a steady stream of vitriol. The best response was on a site run by a Dibish Lussel. The guy who posted it said he wasn't interested in the detail. The detail being the fact that the girls weren't the brides. It showed how much some people want to believe nonsense like this as it reinforces their prejudices. In fact, Hamas also denounced the hoax and confirmed most of the girls who were married were above the age of 18 and the youngest was 16. World Net Delay received a large volume of email asking the news organization to investigate. Hamas indeed held a mass ceremony last Thursday in which nearly a thousand Palestinians celebrated marriage. Many of the families involved said they could not afford their own wedding party. Each groom received a present of about $500 from Hamas, which said its workers had also contributed 5% of their monthly salaries to add to the wedding gift. Ahmed Jaba, the Hamas official in Gaza responsible for social activity, told WND the youngest girl to marry at the ceremony was 16 years old. He said most brides were above the age of 18. Jabba, like two other top officials contacted by WND, was offended by the suggestion Hamas would marry off little girls. He explained the minors seen in the video were family of the bride or groom. He said it was tradition for little girls to dress in gowns similar to the bride. He said the little girls walking down the aisle with the grooms are family members of either the bride or groom. Muhammad, ya Rasool Allah, Muhammad, ya Habib Allah, Muhammad, ya Rasool Allah, ya Habib Allah, ya Nabi Allah, Muhammad. Muhammad, Ya 
صار ما يعرج للافلات وتزاها صرت مبرورا ومن الذنب مغفور والله مدحت بمنزله وشلال اشعار هذا الذي من قبل باتت منصور يا غارة الجبار في يوم ذي قاء هذا الذي في مولدة زلزل الجو واخمد مع النار المجوس فلن صار أم أهل بغات كيف البصار يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي واللي عجز معك ما دور صار ما يعرف للأفلاك وتزار هذا الذي من دون ذنب ونحو ما تقربوا له ليلة اثنون مليار هذا الذي من دون ذنب ونحو ما تقربوا كل ديجور وبهجرة فصل المكذب ولم كسرات الظورك عندنا مثلها طوار يا سيدي يا سيدي يا سيدي واللي عجز معك ما دور صار ما يعرج للأفلاك وتزاح صرت ما followers of the companions. The relevant hadith by Aisha proves that she had passed puberty because she said, the Prophet used to tell us during our period to wear a skirt before physically approaching us. Therefore, the only sexual acts with prepubescent girls were actually just fantasized in the perverted imagination of the person fabricating the lie in his sick mind about thighing and rubbing repeatedly a six-year-old girl. The third lie claims that Lady Aisha had not reached puberty when her marriage was consummated. The fallacy claims that the proof of Aisha's childhood is her saying that her dolls were with her when she was taken to his house as a bride, when she was nine. But Ibn Hajar cites in Fath al-Bari that the Muslim scholars deduced from the context of this hadith the permission to play with dolls regardless of age as a means to learn about matters of the home and raising children.
Indeed, playing with dolls by adults is also common in many recent societies as educational preparation for motherhood. It's ridiculous to claim that merely playing with dolls or swings is evidence of physical or even mental maturity. The evidence for Aisha's adulthood is quite explicit. First, as shown in part one of this presentation, even until the 18th century, psychological maturity coincided with puberty, and all societies recognized puberty as the requirement to give informed consent for marriage. Second, in her parents' opinion, Aisha had reached puberty and was fit for marriage when Abu Bakr requested the consummation, just like the Jewish Princess Sophia, who married when she became capable of marriage in her neighboring Jewish tribe. Third, Lady Aisha said, if the young girl reaches nine years, then she is a woman. She is obviously describing herself and her acquaintances. Fourth, not merely did she reach menstruation, the great Malki scholar Dawoodi commented about her marriage, Aisha then had physically matured well indeed. As a result, not only had Lady Aisha reached puberty when her marriage was consummated, she was also a physically and psychologically mature adult. The fourth like dares to claim that Aisha did not consent to the marriage. Not only did she consent to the marriage according to Islam's requirements, Lady Aisha was overjoyed and stated six privileges directly relating to her marriage. I have been given features not given to any woman. The Prophet married me when I was seven. The angel brought him my image in his hand to look at it. He consummated our marriage when I was nine. I saw the angel Gabriel. I was his most beloved wife. I attended his disease till he died, not witnessed but by me and the angels. It's clear from this hadith that Aisha not only consented, but was even ecstatic about this privilege. The fifth lie claims that Islam permits consummation to prepubescent girls. To disfigure the truth, the fallacy omits the very first verse revealed regarding the waiting period after divorce in the correct context and order. The first verse sets the waiting period to three menstrual cycles. Since old and young women don't menstruate, the second verse was subsequently revealed, setting their waiting period to three months, as explained by Ibn Kathir. And finally, the third verse sets the exception for any marriage that hasn't been consummated. This exception applies to marriages that can't be consummated, such as not only prepubescent girls, but even women who have menstruated but are not yet ready physically or emotionally for intercourse. In fact, the only verse in the Qur'an using the term Bulugh al-Nikah, or age of procreation, to describe puberty mentions the additional requirement of mental maturity for orphans to receive their financial assets. This Islamic requirement of maturity, which is even correctly relayed in Encyclopedia Britannica, undeniably applies even more to marriage contracts because it entails responsibility towards other people. Furthermore, Imam Abu Hanifa legislated that since a woman who reached puberty has authority over her own financial affairs, then she has authority over her own marriage. Consummation before puberty cannot occur because it would violate this right of women to consent. Indeed, an authentic hadith shows that a young girl who was still a virgin came to the Prophet and she mentioned that her father married her to someone while she was forced. So the Prophet gave her the choice to remain married or not. As a result, prior to consummating a marriage, Islam not only requires puberty, but physical and mental maturity followed by consent as well. The sixth ridiculous claim is that Muhammad invented Islam to satisfy his sexual desires. First of all, there were already Talmud and church laws permitting vast sexual aberrations. But while affirming the divine source of Judaism and Christianity, Islam rejected these obviously false interpretations or alterations. Please read the following example. 